Hey, a little tribute to Sean Connery there. For you math students, you're not old enough to know who he is, but I am. That's really all that's important here. Hey, we're going to talk about uh, derivatives use of trigonometric functions using the chain rule. So you don't, you have not yet been exposed to derivatives of trigonometric functions. I'm talking about derivatives of sine, cosine, and tangent. And the first thing you need to know is this is priority one. So we've taught calculus for a few years without having this uh, tool to use. This tool is called the diamond of trust. And with this tool, we've saved a lot of mistakes, especially with, in terms of uh, sign errors with regard to taking derivatives of trig functions. The diamond of trust looks like this. So the S's and C's from uh, top and then going around clockwise, uh, the S's and C's are sine, cosine, negative sine, and negative cosine. And to take the derivative, all you need to do to take the derivative of one of those, if you're taking the, the derivative of sine, simply click right once clockwise, and you know the derivative of sine is cosine. Click again and you know the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Click again, and you know the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. And lastly, click once more, and you know the derivative of negative cosine is sine. So this is a super serious, um, important, and worthwhile tool to use, not only with differentiation, but when we begin with trig functions and integration, we're going to use the same diamond. The difference is, you might expect, we're going to go counterclockwise. That later. But let's use this diamond of trust today so that you understand that the uh, derivatives of each for x in radians, that's an important detail, for x in radians, this entire class is done in radians. Um, so you don't need to sweat that. But what I'm going to show you is inaccurate if you're talking about degrees. So when x is in radians, the derivative first of sine is cosine of x. The diamond of trust tells us so, you're following that. While the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, the derivative of negative sine x, I know what he's going to say next, he's going to say negative cosine x, is negative cosine x. And lastly, the derivative of negative cosine x is indeed sine x. Know it, learn it, love, live it. But you're asking yourself, well, what about tangent, sine, cosine, and tangent? You didn't say anything about tangent. Yeah, so the diamond of trust isn't utilized at all with tangent. We just need to commit this to memory, and there are a lot of calculus students that go through it. They're great with the diamond of trust. As soon as they are given tangent, they're not sure what to do. So this is uh, something that separates great calc students from good calc students. I got to know the derivative of the tangent function it can be written one of two ways. Uh, the first of which is one over cosine squared x. The second of which is secant squared x. So one over cosine squared x is equivalent to secant squared x. Uh, I'm talking about the Foster Wheeler AP exam, multiple choice. You might see them written in either way. So be prepared for that. Here comes four examples utilizing uh, derivatives of trig functions combined with the chain rule. These are the problems you'll most often see with the uh, homework as uh, assignment up and coming. All right, so here is example one. I am challenged to differentiate the function f of x equals cosine squared x. Cosine squared x. And this is the way you'll see it listed. So some students get a little confused here. Uh, my recommendation is that you rewrite this and realize that cosine squared x is exactly the same as cosine x quantity squared. It's kind of nice to see it in this format so you realize the inside function is clearly cosine x when going to use the chain rule, right? So I clearly see that the uh, inside function is cosine x. I would call the outside function some complication squared. Some crap squared is the outside function. So I now am ready to take the derivative using the chain rule I take the derivative of the outside function, which is 2 times, don't disrupt the baby, cosine x. And now I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. Well, using my diamond of trust, I realize the derivative of cosine 
is negative sine. So that's what goes in parentheses here. Multiple choice, common format that you would see here uh, would be um, negative 2 sine x cosine x. That's what I would think is the most popular multiple choice uh, selection that you would be provided. All right. Remember, I can change the order of multiplication. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So you can take cosine x times negative sine x and swap up that order, no sweat. There's example one. Let's keep cranking. Here's example two. This time I'm asked to differentiate g of theta. That's a theta. g of theta equals three sine of two theta. Well, the very first thing that occurs to me is that three in front. You guys need to get used to this. Whenever you see a constant multiplier like this, please, please, please factor that bad lad out and use it as a constant multiplier at the end of your problem, okay? So step one here is I'm gonna rewrite this thing, I'm gonna factor out that three, and then take the derivative of what's left over. Focus on taking the derivative of sine of two theta. I'm just using that factored out three as a multiplier with my final answer, okay? So now that I'm contemplating that sine of two theta, I realize I've got the chain rule because I clearly have an inside function of two theta, while the outside function is the sine of Something complicated, the sign of some crap, all right? So now, I have three times, take the derivative of the outside function, use your diamond of trust. I'm taking the derivative of sine, which I know has a derivative of cosine. So what I'm gonna write here is the cosine of, don't disrupt the baby, the cosine of two theta. Now I got to have a multiplier of the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of 2 theta is a very simple 2. Final answer, reformatted, 6 times cosine 2 theta. Done. Okay, so that's kind of how I would uh, follow through with a problem that has a constant multiplier in front. Factor that bad lad out. Use it as a constant multiplier with your final answer. All right? Two more examples. Here comes example three. I gotta find the derivative of h of t equals e raised to the negative sine t. This is again the chain rule. It doesn't say h of t equals e to the t. The derivative there would be a simple e to the t. It's e raised to something complicated. The inside function is negative sine t. All right, so I'm gonna go take the derivative here. Well, the first thing I do is take the derivative of the outside function, which remains e to the negative sine t, e to the don't disrupt the baby, and I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. Well, if the inside function is negative sine, which is located here on the diamond of trust, I see that its derivative is going to be negative cosine. So the multiplier, and you have to practice this, you guys, the multiplier does not belong up in the exponent. The, alt, uh, the multiplier is at base level here, okay? And the multiplier of negative sine t is cosine t. Again, that is not up in the exponent. That is at the uh, base level of the expression. So now I'm just going to reformat this, which you would probably see Foster Wheeler AP exam multiple choice. Negative cosine t times e to the negative sine t is your final answer. Last one, this is example four. We are to differentiate the function j of t equals tangent, uh-oh, tangent, of quantity five minus t. Tangent of quantity five minus t. The diamond of trust doesn't help me at all. <clears throat> the diamond of trust is used specifically for sine and cosine. The tangent is a separate cap, so I need to know that I gotta remember, the, when I take the derivative of tangent, I get one over cosine squared. But I don't have just a normal old tangent t. I have tangent of something complicated. Yes, I gotta use the chain rule here. So when I go to take the derivative, I'm gonna get the derivative of tangent, one over cosine squared, don't disrupt the baby. So leave that quantity alone. And now I have a multiplier of, and again, this is important, 
the multiplier is at the numerator level of the expression here. Just like in the last problem, I didn't put the multiplier up in the exponent. Here, I don't put the multiplier down in the denominator. This is a common error that uh, calc students make. I need to know that, well, the deriv derivative of 5 minus t, do you know what the derivative of 5 minus t is? Do you know what I'm going to write down? The derivative of 5 is the constant 5 has derivative 0. I'm really just taking and con concentrating on the derivative of negative t, which is negative 1. Final answer could be written one of two ways, the first of which is negative 1 over cosine squared of 5 minus t. The second of which is negative secant squared 5 minus t. All right? One more thing I would like to um, emphasize as I listen to myself speak. If you go to each one of these problems, examples 1, 2, 3, and 4, if I'm looking at uh, example 1, I notice when I read this out loud, this says cosine squared of x. I notice that when I read example 2 out loud, this says differentiate g of theta equals 3 sine of 2 theta. I'm emphasizing the word of, emphasizing that this is a composition of another function. I didn't say 3 sine times 2 theta. That would emphasize the product rule. I'm not multiplying two functions together. Rather, I am evaluating a composition function. Whenever you see a composition function, that's when you got to use the chain rule. H of t equals e raised to the negative sine t. Certainly isn't a product rule here, okay? You need to recognize this as a chain rule. And last example, if you looked at this, differentiate g of t equals tangent of, of, of 5 minus t. So that word of is screaming to me, composition function, inside function, you got to go chain rolling, okay? So that's the game I wanted to emphasize here as you progress through that. Uh, so maybe it's occurring to you, if you read these functions out loud, sometimes you'll say the word times. That's emphasizing to your brain product rule. Other times you're saying the word of. That's emphasizing to your brain you got bells going off. Chain rule. Okay? So get some practice at these type of problems. Know it, learn it, love it, live it. Over and out.